All right, good evening. Welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting for Thursday, October 3rd, 2019. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so <clears throat> the planning board members present tonight is Sean Winston, a regular member. We have the uh, vice chair, Nicole Fecto. We also have a regular member, Mike LaRue. We also have our alternate, Dave Ross Lyons, or excuse me, David Ross Lyons. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. It's a okay. thing. I'm Dave. Um, <coughs> absent tonight is Frank Underwood. So tonight, if there's any voting that's coming up, Dave, you're going to be the um, voting member. We also have our town planner here, our town code enforcement officer, also our planning technician slash Facebook administrator slash web web strike excuse me webmaster. website administrator webmaster, and then uh, also our concert promoter for the town of Berwick, James here, <laughs> and various members of the public. Uh, next is up. Uh, for public comment, public comment is open to any resident or property owner under, who lives in the town of Berwick or is a property owner to come talk about anything that's relating to the, anything under the purview of the planning board. Feel free to come forward. Mr. Wright. Tom Wright, Cemetery Road. Um, I just want to mention to people that uh, we're still looking for members for various boards and committees. Is uh, anybody interested and wants to step forward, contact the people at the town hall. Um, we're starting our uh, comprehensive plan committee starts next week. Is uh, we're still looking for people to participate in that. You know, so anybody interested, please contact the town hall and uh, sign yourself up. All right. We also have a. Um a planning board position here that's available too. If anybody would like to, yep, anybody would like to come hang out with us uh, every couple Thursday nights. So must wear plaid. Yes, <laughs> Sean. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the memo. <laughs> anybody else for a public comment session? All right, seeing nobody come forward, we'll close the public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for uh, September 19th, 2019. Nicole. <laughs> James. <laughs> I already pointed this out to James earlier, but the typo slash typo slash typo sentence still has a typo in it. It's a different typo this time, but still there is a typo. Thanks, James. Yeah. You've already got, the, you've already made that edit. Twice. Anybody else on the uh, minutes? <clears throat> All right. So the uh, motion will be for the approval of, of the minutes as amended. So moved. I'll second. Seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next is a public hearing. Continued public hearing from the conditional use application parking facility, 71 Sullivan Street, map U3, lot 11. It's in the CI zone and the applicant is the town of Berwick. So this application is solely, or this, this public hearing is solely to discuss this application here, which is the uh, parking lot up on Sullivan Street. So feel free to come forward. Public hearing is now open. Public hearing is still open. I'm going Ms. to Sheldon, you guys. can you just identify Ooh, yourself and your address for our viewers at home? Because we have yep. we have a lot of viewers at home. Uh, Louisa Sheldon, 65 Sullivan Street, direct abutter to the new proposed community parking lot. Um, I want to, since the public hearing is still open, um, I'm able to still submit some materials, and I want to <laughs> give that to the board. Sure. Two packets, but I might have kind of messed one up. That's all so, right. Can you can you explain it when you go back up there? Yep. Um, hand them to you. Uh, I don't have copies of the top two there, and um, this should be pretty much the same. I think there's an extra in the back that I'm not sure ended up in that packet, <coughs> but it should have the history of. The old property, the tax card, the square footage, 
There are Google pictures in there um, from Google Earth. There are aerials of the history of the property since probably mid-2000 or some. If you look toward the bottom, they should be dated, and um, that should show you the layout of the property. Um, toward the back, there are some with outlines, red and yellow, about the expansions of um, excavated material after the demolition where um, grassy land was torn up and used for a while. Now it's been disbanded. <coughs> kind of areas are still growing back <coughs> in. Um, but that is the expansion of more square footage that actually equates to a site plan review. Um, so we want to submit those. Um, and those are your documents. <clears throat> Anybody else for the public hearing? Sean Goodwin, 65 Sullivan. Um, just one quick question. If there are no actions being done tonight or anything voted on, <clears throat> Um, I'd like to know if our new CEO is willing to follow the wishes of the planning board and shut the spot down until um, conditions are approved. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else for this public hearing? <clears throat> going once, going twice. All right, seeing nobody else come forward, we'll close the public hearing. Moving on to old business, conditional use application parking facility, 71 Sullivan Street, map U3, lot 11, CI zone. And the applicant is the town of Berwick, and I'll throw it over to the town planner. What are you throwing over to me, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, um, there's no new material from my standpoint to you. I have not seen any additionally revised plans. However, you do have a memo, or you should have a memo from Maloney McBroom, a uh, third party engineer who reviewed the um, design as requested from the last meeting. And um, they have um, gone through and submitted their comments to you um, relevant to the design. Um, I have no additional information to present to you. I know we had asked for a survey <clears throat> showing what was there previously before the sober home was um, torn down. So that parking lot area, that, and, and those structures, <clears throat> um, we didn't receive that because we asked for that. Hi, Todd Gammon, Blaze Civil Engineers. Um, so as Lee J mentioned, I did review the Malone McBroom uh, <clears throat> peer review, and like I mentioned at the last board meeting, uh, mentioned that I was going to add the under drain. We did do that. I, th I thought we just had a pretty good comprehensive site walk, uh, tried to go over all the plans. Pretty limited improvement, to be honest, um, in terms of moving some of the granite blocks. Not a lot of grading work, more removal of pavement and gravel. So we're limiting the impervious as much as we can, bringing in the ed edges from the neighbors. <clears throat> Going to add the big um, issue on the concern about the surface water. It's acting the same way that the, the old curb for the sober house acted. We're going to have the, as we mentioned, a back berm along the fencing, um, a swale, and then around a three foot deep, four inch slotted pipe that's going to be fabric wrapped. So you're going to get a little bit of the groundwater in addition to the surface water. They shouldn't see see that uh, that'll be all redirected down towards the Sullivan Street paved swale. Um, but I'm happy to answer any other questions that came out of the site walk. I think in terms of the lighting, the light, the headlights that was mentioned before, um, thought the fencing looked really good. And then we're, we're trying to give them more gap in terms of the noise and the lighting, bringing the, moving the entrance should be help with uh, any potential safety concerns to kind of separate <coughs> that, have more sight distance for the driveway entrance as we push that over. And uh, we've got about 68 parking spaces in the proposed layout. So it's all gonna remain gravel. I don't think they intend to plow it in the winter, so. Yeah. All right, we'll start off. David? Oh, yeah. I'll come back. Okay, Mike, Nicole? I got questions. 
Um, first of all, I would like to still see uh, some kind of a survey showing what was there previously, because we don't have that. We requested that. We still don't have it, apparently. Um, second of all, I um, we never got this far because the parking lot was tabled for a while. But I would like to see, considering all that we have just been through with the fire department and public access, and since this <coughs> is connected by sidewalks and, and children presumably will be walking through their safe walking paths delineated for people to walk, because it's not safe for kids to be walking through parking lots with cars backing up and whatever, whatnot. So um, that just only makes sense to me. Those are my only two things at the moment. All right, Sean. Um, I don't. <coughs> I don't really have anything regarding the design. I think you know, we talked a little bit with Todd when we were out there about having the berm in front of the fence, which should you know, in the swale, should keep anything that runs that direction um, on that side of the fence. Um, I, don't, I don't, don't really have any further <coughs> questions about the design. So. So the only question that I have is, and I saw it tonight when we went out there, is people park on the grass. Mm. And they do that naturally anyway when there's not a lot of parking. They park on the grass. They think it's going to be okay. And I know the abutters who are here tonight were concerned about that. And you and I had talked <coughs> at length about this. Can you just talk a little bit about keeping people? Obviously, you're going to have that, that, that area there in between the fence and the parking lot, but... How would you keep people from parking on the grass? Um, I mean, the intent right now with the plan is just have a well-delineated edge with grass. I mean, I understand I saw them parking on the grass today, but keep in mind there's a lot less parking spaces too. So they're basically, when they drive in, they can only be on that one side. They can't go get on the side, the yeah. other side of the granite blocks. So now I'm going to have a 26-foot sweep to, to get people to access the right side. I mean... Ultimately, I talked to the town about that. If we're not going to pave and we're not going to stripe, how do you delineate the spaces? So we thought we'd be creative, make use of the existing granite blocks. Steve mentioned that they could potentially bring in some other blocks from the fire station. I'd maybe, the project, I'd maybe see how that goes. Um, I just want to make sure that the surface water that intends to get to the swale, I would rather it be able to actually get to that swale and not form a wall so it stays in the gravel. That's the only thing I'd say. Sometimes you can get <laughs> wheel stops that have the gap under the stop so water can still pass through. If you're not going to plow in the winter, you could potentially do that, or we even talked about stakes and or put up some signage in, that isn't currently there now. But there's going to be a lot more delineated grass. We're adding a lot more grass. I think with the increase in the better layout and with the 68 spaces, hopefully there's not going to be as much motivation to potentially park in the grass but i guess we could play it by ear and add those wheel stops as ne if necessary and or bring in the you could just put the gravel uh, i guess on top of the existing okay. uh, uh the granite on top of the gravel if you had to but it, it can be tricky to delineate when you have gravel okay dave no, i'm good nicole sean over here. Oh, that's I know. No, I, no. <laughs> you weren't looking at me. I don't think. <coughs> no, I think the uh, the granite or something there really should be is necessary because you know people are going to just park in there unless you have a ditch they're going to park in. Was it the fire station or was it prime tanning you were going to get those blocks from? Is over at the Estabrook School is along the front where the uh, uh, playground was. They're about. 15 or 20 granite blocks okay. buried in the berm on the cross there and uh, rather than have it disposed of when yeah. we uh, have the excavation over there you know steve and i talked about bringing it and bringing it over there to help yeah. you know delineate spaces on it so yeah i think that i i don't i don't think 15s i think 15s way too many but well just, uh, that's what we have access to yeah so yeah no it, but is, um, that's probably the best idea yeah yeah because I mean, you can leave big enough spaces for water to get through yep right. but not a car right and as far as you know delineated walking spaces it's a parking lot mostly people are going to be getting out of the cars and walking through the parking lot is there is grassy swales on either side for people to walk but you know it 
people are going to naturally walk through the parking lot. I don't see how we can stop that. Oh, no, I don't want to stop it. I'm just thinking, like, kids. I mean, I know my kids used to walk down there when they were smaller. It should be safe for kids to walk through there, and I wouldn't want... I wouldn't want to not provide that so that kids have a safe place to walk. That's all. It just makes sense to me. We've got the space. We've got grass. And what are you talking about? As well, as I don't know. Just delineated? something that's like, hey, like, make it look like this is where you should be walking, not down. I mean, the first kid that gets run over because they're cutting through this parking lot to, to get through there, we're going to say, wow, it would have been really easy just to kind of make it seem like you should walk here. That's all. I'm not looking for a sidewalk or lights or anything. I just want a safe place for kids to walk because this is how a lot of kids are going to be getting to there now. And, you know, as you know, look at the plan, there are there, on either side, there are well, definitely there's places. Well, there's I mean, a swale is like, like this, right? right. Well, it, it, yes, but, you know, you have kids. I have kids. I have grandkids. Mine are 16, so they're well, on their own is, now. But mine I'm are 30s. Like <laughs> mine are in the 30s, but is, um, it, you know, is, I've never known a swale to stop a kid. But is on the opposite side, where I guess that would be the west side over at the uh, on yeah, it seems more flat La over there. Yeah, on Martha Lapierre's <laughs> property, I believe it is there. I'm just no, there's a big grassy swale there, a uh, swath yeah. there, anyways. So, is you know, if you want us to put a couple signs up, you know, is that's not a problem. But when you talk about a delineated path, well, I just want to make no, sure yeah, you know. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm only saying that we know because we just went through all of that with the fire station. We know that this is part of the corridor and we want people walking. I just don't want kids walking down the middle of an aisle where cars could be backing up. That's all I don't want. That's it. And again, I, I don't see how we can stop that from happening. No, no, you can't stop but, it, but you can provide just a little safe like area. Maybe, you know, just make it wide enough so that over here where the hydrangeas are gonna go or whatever it is, you know, that kids can walk. Yeah, there's probably from that fence to the edge on the northern side. So when you're driving in on the far right, there's probably 40 feet of space. Over yeah, there. and I think there's gonna be less traffic over on that side anyway, because the entrance and exit, I don't I just want it to be safe for the kids. You know how many kids are over there, lots. All right, Jen, can you just answer the question during the public comment session? You want me to answer it right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason why, um, the past CEO, can you not hear me? Well, I just want to make sure it's in the mic so everybody can hear it because it'll come and back sorry up. Sorry about the voice, a little sick. That's okay. All right, Jen. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, I told him. You're going to get sick. Sorry, bud. Okay, so <laughs> James got me sick. I just want that on camera. <laughs> For the sick. record, James, put that in the minutes. I'm sick too, so put that in the minutes. Okay, so the reason why um, our previous CEO didn't close the parking lot is because it was a life safety issue, so he deemed it as that. It wasn't that we didn't know that the parking lot, you know, was in violation we know it was a life safety issue so on saturday morning when there's 14 plus soccer teams over there you know playing soccer and all these kids and all these parents if you've ever driven into the um parking lot down at the rec field you would know that sometimes they're parked along the front sometimes they're parked along the back and sometimes they're parked in like a weird like thing down the middle with two rows so you can't even back out anyway and they're parked all along the side of Sweetster Street. So if an ambulance or a fire truck had to get in there, they couldn't. They couldn't even get down the road barely to get up there. So that's why um, he never closed the parking lot. And it is October 3rd today, and fall sports are going to be ending in three weeks, and that is why I will not close the parking lot. Same, same reason. What did we do? I mean, before we had that parking lot, that was all we had, and, and right. it wasn't a concern. You weren't closing down Sweetser Street to parking to, for that, so it seems like, I don't know. I mean, I, I see the, the Sheldon's uh, well, Goodwin. I see point I, too. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't, yeah. um, but I will tell you, this parking lot is a safe way for people to park and get their kids out of their vehicles. Over on Sweetser Street, they were parking on people's lawns. They were parking in their driveways they were parking blocking their driveways it really was much different they're at least confined to a parking lot now so, so since, that's the difference since the town was in violation from basically april until now still in violation is there any what okay <laughs> yeah, sorry the, the head of the board of selectmen is shaking his head at me 
um, since they've been in violation, um, as you said, as the code <laughs> enforcement officer, you just said we're in violation. We know we're in violation. Mm -hmm. What is is there any repercussions if a if a citizen was in violation, and knowing knowing and, and notified by the town, the town knew if a citizen was in violation. Is there any repercussions? Is there a fine that a citizen would get, or it's just oh well, you're in violation and that's all? Like what's I'm just saying I would like to hold the town to the same standards that I'm held to as a property owner in this town. Correct. So if you were actively going to the planning board for something about your own property, mm -hmm. a lot of times they kind of hold off and wait for it to go through. That's what they've done. That's what the previous CEO did um, on a couple of different occasions. I'm not going to mention names. We can talk after if you want. Okay. Um, and they kind of held off. So if it's not going to go through and it's not going to happen, maybe it's a different answer. But that's the answer right now because it is a life safety issue. It is a safety issue. You're concerned about the kids walking down the middle of a parking lot, mm -hmm. but kids are walking, you know, down wow. the road at this point, and they're going yeah. to continue to do that either way. I see your point, and I see Mrs. Sheldon's point, um, but that's why we haven't been closing it. So will the town be held to the same standard? Yes. If this doesn't go through, they will start getting letters and they will be held to the same standard. That's my answer. Can we, can, we just, can we just agree to stop any grading or any construction down there until this goes through the planning board? Let's not build swales and all this kind of stuff until then. Can we just? We haven't done anything no, since. No, you built, built, put a fence. There, there's been a lot, there's, <laughs> Tom, there's been a lot of grading. There's been fences. Can we just? The material brought in. The, the, can we just, the fence, can we just the hold fence off? was talked about last year after we bought the property. Which the fence it, is it, fine. It, the fence right. is fine. Well, you, you can put a fence You're up. the one that just brought it up is there's nothing that any of us saw that prevents us from putting a fence up. Is there? No. No. Is we can put a fence up. We put it up there to protect the abutters. We were having complaints about people with headlights and cars backing up. We put a fence yep. up. So that we did you know to help the abutters yep. is we didn't do that and since then we haven't done any more grading we haven't done anything there and as far as in violation is the town's position and our lawyer's position is that we own a parking lot we bought a parking lot we own a parking lot that's why i was shaking my head you know is there are differences of opinions yes but our attorney the town's attorney told us that is we have the right to do that. That's why we allowed Park in there. I would put the letter from the attorney that says that into this file. I'm requesting um, the statement from the town's attorney to be put into this file, please. All right, so this application, we're going to move ahead here. This application has not been voted yet complete. Good. Correct? This oh, was check. tabled. This was tabled from a while ago. But this application has not been back. voted complete. Yeah, I think it was end of April. It was. Was it voted as complete? Yes. yes. Come on, it's been it's been going on so long that I. I, I would have to review the minutes, which I will. Oh, I'm sure it's James because I have to go through actual um, papers, and I have only June here. He's in the wrong town. <laughs> <laughs> I have a quick question for you, Jen. If it was an emergency issue, why wouldn't why couldn't we just limit it to emergency vehicles in the meantime? For what? For the parking lot. If you say if it's a life. There's no emergency entrance on that their emergency entrance is actually through the sliding gate on Sweetster Street oh, and when that. they park on that side and double no yeah. they couldn't get in yeah. no 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 I, I know that but what I'm saying is is on Sullivan Street if they if it was deemed that, as um, a safety that. issue so okay. the fire truck can get in and stuff why don't we just restrict it to just safety vehicles only for Sullivan Street yeah there's no emergency entrance on that side. There's no vehicle gate <coughs> right. to get into oh. the field. You can actually drive right in um, <coughs> the Sweetster Street entrance. That's the difference. Okay. There's a full size gate you can drive a vehicle Sullivan's through right on Sweetster. Yep. Okay. Sullivan, they'd have to walk 
a good distance to any emergency on the fields themselves. They would have right. To park no, I understand. But you said that your reasoning for not closing the park, the parking lot down was before. Okay. So emergency because of double cars being parked on Sweetster Street. Okay. Six months that. ago. If so that's ever, the safety. Okay. That's All right. where the okay. life safety issue comes okay. in. Okay. All right. I was just confused on that. No. Positive. Yeah. No. Correct. Okay. I'm not so I just want to, I'm sorry, do you have no, anything I'm else? No, I'm done. I just want to read an email from Frank Underwood. He could not make it here tonight. Um, he just wanted to bring up two things to me. He says, I think the under drain should connect as far down into the stormwater system as gravity flows and allows it and not break out to surface. Also, he says, also the under drain under the ditch line should be low, deep as possible, even fact even flat to a pitched point near the road to make the effort to keep the total waste or the total water table drawn down. Do you have anything on that? Um, yeah, we had talked about that. There's a storm drain out in Sullivan. Yeah. But just the cost of excavation, you, I mean, potentially if you're going to put that in, you could key it into the side of the storm drain in Sullivan. You're going to excavate all the pavement, access that pipe. The pipe would be lower, but you could potentially want a maintenance access port, which you'd put in a full catch basin, which is yep. $3,000. And, you know, it keeps going from there. Whereas if you put an under drain in three feet down, we're only going to get so low. I mean, there might have some groundwater mitigation. But as you discharge it, the point that it's coming, so the grade's going like this, and the pipe's deeper, and it's coming to a point where it discharges, the point where it discharges and is more shallow is beyond their house a little bit. So I'm trying to get you know, for the most part, the deeper section, and then where you discharge it doesn't matter anyway because the water's already down towards the paved area. So we did consider that. I mean, I had my, uh, I had the surveyor find that catch base and get me the inverts in case I uh, wanted to key into that. But I think there's going to be such a small amount of flow going out of there. You put mm -hmm. a little bit of riprap to dissipate the energy of any flow that gets through there. It's going to have the same, you know, uh, function that the curb did before where it was all paved, it's probably going to be slower because the, I mean, the time of concentration yep. for a drop of water to go on pavement, hit a curb, and go right out to Sullivan. We're going to have a slower TC path, hit some of that riprap, dissipate the energy, then go down over the grass. I think it's probably, I don't know what else we might get into if we start digging into Sullivan. Okay. So I think You had a question for the town planner? <clears throat> um, I would, well, <laughs> I'm not confident or convinced since we don't have the, uh, the, previous conditions that this does not require a site plan review. So um, I don't see anything from our third party review that says that that was looked at and I haven't heard anything otherwise from anybody else with complete confidence that just this doesn't require a site plan. I just, I want to know that before I vote on anything. I'm, I'm not going to vote in favor of this unless I know for sure that this does not require a site plan. You want to give me a few minutes? I can I've, I'll give you all the time you want. Do we have any other questions from the uh, board? I thought I, by the way, I thought I had answered that question early on in this process and suggested. Well, I forgot. <laughs> I think in one no, of you your said memos. You, you, had, you had asked to have the overview of the original home that was on the plan or the original home put on the plan to see whether or not it triggered site plan review. Because all of Correct. that was because disturbed. Yeah. Correct. <coughs> oh no, uh -oh. the cough is oh, back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I thought that that analysis had been done and that was discussed during one of the meetings, but I may be mistaken. But let me look up the standard for site plan review. Oh, thank you. There is a standard for it. I believe you mentioned that it was like, 5,000. Oh, Lee J, yeah. can you speak into the microphone, please? We can't hear Sorry. you. Sorry. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I want to check that, but I do think that the threshold was 5,000 square feet of new. Of new impervious area. Yes. Um, where the heck does site plan review start? So one of the things that I did do when that came out of the last meeting, if you look on this plan, the limits of impervious are going to be shrunk quite a bit. And I can't remember the, the total amount, but if you look on the edges north and south along the property owners, it's quite a bit of removal of existing gravel pavement. 
and grass along the edges with a better delineated gravel mm -hmm. area. So there's, from the current condition, there's quite a from bit cur less. I understand from current so condition, I want from previous. And then also, how yeah. much has been disturbed on that site? I mean, there's well, a lot of Well, one of the things material. I did do as far back as I could go is you can do the Google Earth historical search. So when I did that, and I did a, uh, <coughs> got the scale, and went back to the sober house in 1998. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they had a delineated impervious area that didn't include where I uh, write the word, right, where I write the phrase EMS parking that's closer to the uh, ball field. Yeah. Um, that little stub out isn't shown on the photo. But right. overall, from this plan that I'm showing for the proposed improvements to the 1998 photo, there was about 2,600 square feet of gravel beyond what was there in 1998 and I think we discussed that at the last meeting um, because Lee Jay had put in the memo about the 5,000 trigger and I was wondering myself or is there yeah. is this an elevated permit I just and, want to make sure that that's yeah. real clear um, yep okay so here, and here are definitive. the standards that are in the ordinance they're found on page 111 and 112 thank you um, <clears throat> substantial expansion is defined in a floor area increase of 500 square feet or 25 percent of the existing floor space well there is no floor space 500 correct okay new material processed or production or services and or sales not normally associated with the existing use well that's doesn't qualify either an increase of 2500 square feet or more of the amount of impervious surface parking and walks well, you had a building there, and that was where the calculation would be done to show what was coming down, which was impervious already. And um, I think that that had been done early on in, the, in this process. No changes or modifications shall be made in any approved conditional use or site plan approval without approval of the changes by the planning board. Site plan review. Conditional uses which meet the criteria specified below shall require site plan review approval in in accordance with this section the construction of addition of 3,000 square feet of gross non-residential floor area there's no floor area mm -hmm. the installation of of or expansion of 5,000 square feet of impervious surface well I'm assuming that they're taking credit for the building that was there as impervious right. prior to so I don't think that I mean 5,000 square feet is a lot I don't think that they've met that Correct. threshold good good the establishment or expansion of a mobile home park, projects involving extraction industries, um, or multifamily dwelling units. Perfect. So they have not met any of those standards that would require site plan review. All right, so it is definitive that th this does not require a site plan review. Correct. Thank you. All right, further questions? <laughs> All right, I'd like to call the vote here. If there's no further questions, I'd like to call the vote for um, Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No. Uh, no. Before you do that, just as uh, I do have a Are note here as a refresher. Yes, um, Nicole. You did. There was one condition. <laughs> then, that's why I said bring it up. That's well. That's yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, because they're not. They were not going to use the lot during the winter. There was mm -hmm. a concern, and you wanted to condition it on no snow dumping mm -hmm. on that site. So I bring that back for your Thank you. thought during your right. process. Um, and that if there was going to be, if it was ever going to be used as a parking ride, that the fees collected for that would go to the rec department. That was Frank's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to bring those back to your attention so that you don't lose sight of that if you choose to go in that direction. Thank Do you have those written out? Uh, not formally, but I can quickly. All right, would, some, would somebody like to make Sean, those? Do you have any other conditions that you? I would suggest that we add the addition of the granite uh, delineation for the parking along um, along the side where the drainage swale is the west side sure. what, is it that the west side west side southern southern southern, 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 southern side, side. Yeah. to prevent you know parking on the grass yeah, it is. <laughs> Hold on.
while, while he's writing that down, is just about the parking, is the town does not intend to use it as a snow dump, is we do not intend to have overnight parking there. Um, it'll be restricted to you know, the recreation facility and other town events. And you no, know, we may occasionally need overflow parking for another event downtown or something yep. but is uh, is uh the coast bus doesn't want to use it as a park and ride it's not going to be out of their loop and they don't want to make that swing up around there anymore so those are some of the concerns that i'd heard in the past about the parking there and you know if there are any other you know concerns i'd be happy to try to answer them yeah can we put no overnight parking in the conditions please yeah, that's the same thing we've had downtown here. Yeah, you know, yeah. we've had well, we had trouble with mm -hmm. uh, people parking, you know, eighteen wheelers downtown, and we had to, you know, take care of that problem. We did. Yes. Really? Where? In the <coughs> the parking lot on Wilson Street. No kidding. Yeah, people. There were a couple guys that would park their uh, rigs there overnight or over the weekend, and uh, oh, who lived in town? Yeah. Okay. So is. Uh, so, so yeah, is, you know, our intention is to make it as a community parking lot, not, you know, as yep. a commercial parking lot. With the new information that you added, um, this written narrative, the most current one, where they propose the hours of operation are 5 a.m. till 9 p.m., we think that's absolutely unacceptable. I don't know where else in Berwick opens up at 5 a.m. Cumberland Farms is open all night. I think it's fine. Is that, uh, you, you agree with that? I agree with okay. that. Okay. Okay. So, All right, what do you have for, con so the first thing that we're going to have to vote on tonight is th the uh, conditions of approval. Correct. So, Lee J. So, um, I've added a couple that were discussed just because I figured mm -hmm. you want to throw them in there as ironclad. But, um, number one, um, granite blocks shall be added to the south side of the parking lot to act as parking, bumper, uh, parking bumpers, so no parking on the grass will occur. Number two, no overnight parking will be allowed. Number three, any use of the lot for a park and ride um, and collects and fees collected shall be provided to the Parks and Rec Department. And number four, the lot shall not be used as a snow dump during the winter months. Is the lot just going to be closed in the winter months? It's got a four by four. Right, okay. Yeah, we don't plan on plowing it. Yeah. I mean, if you don't feel you need that. Yeah. He's cert they have certainly stated that at this meeting, so it's pretty much a self-imposed condition. Okay. Anybody else? Nope. Would somebody like to make a motion for approval of the conditions of approval? I'll, I'll make a motion that to approve or accept the conditions of approval. I'll second that. Further, <laughs> further discussion? All in favor? Okay. And next is on the application. And we'll have the findings of fact next meeting? That's correct. Okay. Next would be for approval of the application. Sean, you want to approve it? I'm still thinking. <laughs> well, we can always discuss it. Um, I move that we approve <laughs> the Town of Berwick parking facility at 71 Sullivan Street. Okay. <clears throat> we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded. Further discussion? Do you want to discuss? <laughs> the only discussion I have is that I'm a little, I guess I'm disappointed in the way this all went down. Me too. Down. Mm -hmm. I That's think all we all I have are. to say. Yeah. It's just, it's, I think it's been a mess from the, from the start, and it, it shouldn't be this difficult. That's all I, I have to say. Well, all right. Anybody else? Starts from the top. Any, anybody, Nicole, anybody else? No, that's it. 
Okay, all in favor? Okay, that's 5 0. All right, thank you. Thank you <clears throat> can, I, can I just put an aside nope. in here? Not, nothing, to do, nothing to do with that at Tom, all. It, it, Tom, this, this, Tom, would you, Tom, would you let me do this at your meeting? You know what? Oh, okay. Okay. One tit for tat, I'll do this at your meeting. Go ahead. Yeah. What? No, it is um, no, when you would, at the beginning of the meeting, when you would, were uh, you know, introducing your board, is. Uh, we haven't appointed Mike as a full member yet because we haven't got the letter yet. So we just have to go through that. So uh, next Tuesday, if you're available, yep. we'll go through that. Okay. <laughs> well, being official. Yep. We talked about it before. Mike and I talked about it before. And they slipped I had asked somebody whether or not he was an official yeah, member. He just did, doesn't count. That's not true. <laughs> yeah, I've asked a couple of people, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, right. we, we just have to do the official, official. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Just one in there. Yep. Okay. All right, next on the agenda is new business. It's a site plan amendment, Mineral Industry, 6 Industry Drive. It's map R72, lot 12-5. It's in the AP zone, which is the aquifer protection zone. And the applicant is Northeast Ready Mix. Yes, you do have a memo from me on this. Um, back on July 29th, the applicant proposed an amendment to the site plan application Re um, <clears throat> to revise the general note number four on the approved plan to allow non potable water to be supplied to the site by gravel wells rather than by drilled wells um, as originally approved. Potable Water has been used by the facility through the commercial bottled water through a commercial bottled water company. Potable water will continue to be provided by a bottled water company or by a drilled well. Clearwater Artesian Well Company has provided a letter to you with the justification to provide change to the well. The applicant has also needed to obtain approval from the main DEP for a change to <coughs> excuse me, the washout pit. Um, and the wells, which had not been initially lined um, and needed to be. The applicant went back to the DEP for an amended, amendment to the approvals as for the well issue, but also needed to seek approvals for the washout pit at the same time. The DEP permit is attached, or should be in your packet, um, for your review as part of the application. Staff did not, want to, did not want to see this application before the planning board until such time as the DEP approved all the modifications so that the board and staff could be assured, a word. It's good mm -hmm. thing you guys don't clear up I, my typos. I, I have them all <laughs> underlined, Lee J. Hey, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, a lot of projects go <laughs> over my desk every day. What's going on? Um, the changes would, and, and it didn't come out on spell check either, so there you go. Um, must be a word. Yeah, <laughs> that the changes would be approved and no further modifications to the plan would be needed. Third party review has been finished at this time and the applicant had complied with all of the requirements discussed during the approval process. At this time I have no further information for you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> uh, thank you, Lee J. My name is Lou Chamberlain from Atar Engineering and I'm representing Northeast Ready Mix. And Lee Jay gave a, an accurate uh, summary of what our amendment entails. Basically. Short of a typo or two. Lou. I'm not going to pick <laughs> on that. <laughs> That's been done. Um, so we're basically just changing the, the well from a drilled well, which was on the approved site plan as a requirement, to a gravel well that can provide non-potable water to the plant, basically. And they've been using that ever since they've been in operation, and they put it in. Uh, based on the well driller's recommendation that, based on his experience, they were going to get the adequate water they needed with the gravel well using the aquifer that, that is uh, near the site. And so we submitted the application and waited to get our DEP permit. The, the DEP has reviewed and approved um, the plan, and the, that permit is, is, I believe, in your packets. And if there's any questions, if it's not, I have a copy answer. here. No, and yeah. I have a copy as well. So I don't think, obviously, I don't think that this has to go before a site walk or even a public hearing. This is something that could get approved in one evening. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's, yep. it's a pretty easy amendment, I think, yeah. in this case. So. Yep. <coughs> Questions? Uh, no. It seems nope. very straightforward. Okay. Thanks for coming in and clearing it up. 
No problem. <laughs> Haven't seen you guys just, in a while. Oh, <laughs> <it took. laughs> You're looking well. I thought yeah. we were done with you guys. <laughs> just us. <laughs> we're glad to be here. The DEP took a while to um, do the permit. They're busy. We understood that. And, um, yeah, so we just wanted to come in when we had the permit. So. Well. So, I move that we, well, oh no, we're not, we're not. We don't have to do conditions of approval, but we have findings of fact tonight, so we can actually approve okay, those this approve evening that, but before. But a question, so. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so the washout pit, something, you said something about lining, not lining, what was going on with that? Um, well, Luke can probably explain it better, but the washout pit was originally being used without being lined. And that was one of the issues that the um, third party inspector um, worked with them on. And okay. um, made, I think they were looking at how thick the lining, lining needed to be in order to accommodate that operation. The pit, the pit was always lined. The design always had a liner. but That's what I thought, remember yeah, from the original. We, we talked about that. Yeah. Um, and they were using a temporary pit. Northeast Ready Mix realized very soon that they wanted to go with a different design than what we had put on the original plan. And so the town engineer's uh, recommendation was to get that approved by the DEP before we put in a permanent pit. And so, as I said, that, took, that process took a little bit. Um, they, so they've been using a temporary pit that um, the engineer was looking at every week. And it was lined with poly, but it wasn't a permanent uh, solution. Yeah. So that clarify? Yes. Okay. Yes. So do, so we, were, do we have, do we, get to, do we get to see that design for the permanent pit or? So uh, go ahead, Lou. We get a, thank you. We I've got, got copies of it, and the reason that's not on the plan is that was kind of being discussed as we were doing this amendment, and I think it got determined that as long as the DEP was okay with it and the town engineer was okay with it, that it didn't really constitute a planning board amendment. But since we're here, I can give you a copy of the new. I'd like to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's lined with instead of okay. Uh, yeah. Poly. And just to clarify, this project has been monitored by a third party yep. reviewer. Oh, yes. Yeah. We we, on a weekly very, basis? On a weekly it? basis, yeah. and we received very detailed reports yeah. from so the third party. For the, for the viewing audience at home, between the DEP and the third party reviewer, this project has been very um, well monitored. And yes. Double it, check. It's still in the same place, the washout pit. Well, it's, it is. Generally. General. Okay. And we've got to do an as built as part of the, the approval, so that'll, it's a little different, but generally the same area. Okay. Oh. Shall, shall I? Any further questions for the applicant? I don't have any questions. Oh. I have no questions. All right. So the first thing that we're going to vote on this evening for this application is the findings of fact. Has well, everybody had a chance to review the findings of fact? I would like to read through them. Plans. Okay. I believe what I did as well at the end of those findings was included all of the previous conditions of approval as part of this so that it wasn't assumed that those went away okay. as part of any amendments. <clears throat> it was pretty straightforward. Not many of those findings were going to change at all. Mm -hmm. Just the well, really. And it didn't change the findings. Well, in that case, I move that we approve the findings of fact for Northeast Ready Mix. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Okay. And now we're voting on the application in itself to approve the application. I move that we approve the amendment to the plan for Northeast Ready Mix. We have a motion for an amendment to the application or to the approval. A second. Okay. Further discussion? <laughs> All in favor? All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So nice to see you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Next on the agenda, findings of fact, conditional use application, adult use marijuana store, 357 Portland Street, map R70, lot 12-1. It's in the RCI zone. The applicant was Paper Birch Property. Tab is that under James? Four. Four. <coughs> God knows I ran back the next day and did them immediately for you. You did? What a good guy. <laughs> oh, that's right. Here it is. <coughs> this stuff together. James, I don't think I have a tab four. Uh oh. How many boxes do you guys have in your basement full of planning board meeting? I do, and then like I have, I have two this. big box bankers boxes yeah. so, full yeah. of stuff already. <laughs> Are they organized too? Like very, I try very to keep my so. stuff all organized by applicant, and then keep way like the, the last You're supposed six, to keep way them. in the back. Six yeah. months worth Married of it. applicants here. Mike. You're supposed to keep them. <laughs> Mike well, uses them for rolling paper. I'll get you a no. box, <laughs> Dave. I'll get you a Sometimes box. Sometimes they disappear in my, my folder. Okay. okay. I'll I'll all right. Too, I have a box. All right. I have plenty of boxes. Come over and look at yours if I need to. Yeah. It's like the Paul library. Bear has probably 50 years He's got worth him on in those microfilms. <laughs> Microfiche? <laughs> Microfiche. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, well. Back to what we were talking about here. <laughs> conditional use application, or conditional use. Uh, findings conditions, of fact. Findings, findings of, of fact. fact. Findings of fact. I'm sorry. Um, I'm getting all giddy here. I will <laughs> move that we approve the findings of fact for Paper Birch property um, on 357 Portland Street. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All in favor? All right, there we go. Approved, 5-0. Next on the agenda is the public comment session. It's open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that's under the purview of the planning board. They're all feel sick free of to, us. Feel free to come forward. Well, they're sick of us now. Seeing nobody come forward, close the public comment session. Next on the agenda, which James left off. Informational items, James. Any informational items for the board and the public? Does anybody have anything that they'd like to share? I just had, I just had a question, going back to not about the, the ready mix, but yeah. the industry drive. Yes. How's that whole thing moving along? It's moving along. With um, the meeting with South Berwick. Yes, the, um, we, had, uh, we talked about the potential of meeting with South Berwick. Um, fortunately, South Berwick's planner um, is my executive director, so we have an opportunity in-house to talk about that stuff. And um, <clears throat> I think that before they forged ahead with that, since it was only going to be an access road or a roadway um, coming through Berwick, we needed to get or wanted to get a legal opinion um, as to whether that law applied. Um, we actually retained on our on our nickel, SMPDC's nickel, um, your attorney, who is also South Berwick's attorney. Um, so we got both of your town's attorneys. Um, opinion on it and his opinion is that it does need to have a joint review um, and um, they are moving forward with the application I don't think that they're ready to submit their application yet but I believe my executive director will be sending a formal letter to me on your behalf um, suggesting that we need to do this so there's a whole process going on behind the scenes and at some point you will um, be engaged in that application and the, all that corrective work that had to be done from the original industry drive application, has that been I'd rather been not planned? get into that at this time, Okay. but um, we'll discuss it at some point in the future. Excellent. I, I know the answer to other, that question. I have two but other items for you if you'd like. Oh, sure. Lee oh, There's nothing we would <coughs> like more. Uh, SMPDC, I don't know if you guys saw this book. I talked to James tonight. Um, we have a copy. Is, this is my book. I keep it on you, me Yeah, we have times, a copy. Like okay, in well, my we, car. we are very close to finishing a revision um, because the 129th session of the legislature is closed and all of the bills are now um, law. And so anything to do with land use or environmental regulations have been added to the new book. Oh. And it will be coming out the end of this month. So I need a head count um, on behalf of the town so that um, we go to print because we, we print 
hundreds of these things to we go We would out. each like one, right? Yeah, yes. and James, yeah. yeah. And Jennifer. And Jen. yeah. Yeah. One, two, five, <laughs> seven. I, we'll, we'll look at like 10 a dozen? or 12 yeah. Yeah. For, the, uh, for the town. Maybe the selectmen would like it too. Um, Why don't we try selling them a Cumbies? <laughs> 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 like, you know how like they oh, had the oh, yeah. 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 Um, the, yeah. the, the, other thing, the other thing that you ought to be aware of is that um, Natalie Burns who is our corporate counsel um, and myself will be doing a training session um, on October 30th um, in Sanford mm -hmm. um, please call my office if you are going to register to go is that the thing we're already going to? Are you already registered? Yeah, to yeah. Okay. We're, we're registered. So confused. Yeah. So, <laughs> great. Okay. Oh, wow. So, um, what it is is you're not gonna, you'll hear some of, from me, but you guys hear enough from me. Most of it's going to be Natalie. But what we're really going to talk about is more recent court cases um, that have come down the pike that will um, probably require you to make changes in your process or think about changes in your process based on the law court decisions. Um, also, we'll be talking about a little bit about Robert's rules and process and procedure internally. Um, I'll probably be handling that part of the presentation. Um, oh, please don't call me out. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to call any of my boards out, uh, <laughs> at least by name. <laughs> um, uh, and last on the agenda, we, um, we may be doing somewhat of an update, and I say may because it depends on how long this whole thing goes. We're trying to keep it to two hours. Um, it will be a thing on, on marijuana, um, both the medical update as well as the um, um, adult use, but I can tell you that you guys as a board are much further along than many, many communities. So I wouldn't, you know, for your sake, you don't have to worry about hearing all that stuff. Um, you guys are in good shape for that. Um, you'll all get, I'm not, the, the packet that we've put together for this is really thick, so you're not going to get the packet, but we're putting all of the packets on thumb drives for everybody mm -hmm. to take. So most of the night it's just going to be talking heads between Natalie and myself and maybe some other staff. But you'll have all of the information on a thumb drive to take home and oh, good. read at night. Oh, we will. <laughs> we, will. Mm. we do. We have like little, you know, well, yeah. uh, we're, it's like book club. Less than two people at a time. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, two sure. or less at a time. Well, yeah. that yes. stuff you can yes. talk about two all you less. want amongst two each other. As long as it's not a project. Yes. <laughs> Correct. All right. Good night. Good night, guys. So, so um, anyway, that's, that's happening. Um, also, just a side note for you that we do, we are going to need to make an amendment to the uh, subdivision ordinance. He's killing me right now. <laughs> the state, one of the state laws that changed is that mylars are no longer going to yes, be required. Yes, I heard that. You, I think you told us yeah. last, last meeting. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the paper. minutes on last meeting. 20-pound white paper. So <coughs> yeah. yeah. Anytime what is there, uh, did they give a reason for that? I don't know, but it feels like we're going backwards rather than yeah. requiring an electronic submission. Yeah. You know, they're going from mylar to paper. Um, but that's that's the, the way they're doing it. The new it. standard. Yeah. <laughs> Anything, uh, else? Anything else, Mr. Underwood? I, I mean, I got, I got oh, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not leaving. That's all we need to know, right? Yeah, you're not leaving. Um, Oh, Jen's got something. No, I'm not leaving. Why okay, do you good. keep hearing this? And people keep asking. It, you know, the rumor mill's churning. Oh, my God. You got something really important? He's yeah. going to tell you I'm leaving. No. If you want to get a, a sweatshirt, they're very soft. You can go to berwickmain.org slash community slash shop. It's made with a lot of love. <laughs> it's made with a lot of love. It's very soft. Um, oh, my God. James, uh, you're not doing anything. I suggest, <laughs> washing, <laughs> I suggest washing and drying. Is that all you have? Mm. Oh, that was funny. That was good. That was good. Jennifer. Nope. Done. You're done? Yeah. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Trust me. I'm her sure. cold All right. is catching up to yeah. her. Uh, next on the agenda, anybody else have anything here? Next on the agenda is the adjournment. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I yeah. motion for an adjournment of October 3rd's meeting. October 3rd's meeting. All right. There we go. I'll second. Second in. Further discussion. All in favor? All right.